Hey folks, welcome to a programming video from Rebel Guru. Now we know that the study live is going on and that's the time when most students actually start studying. Um, about CP2, we've got feedback that many of you find programming difficult or confusing. Some of you understand the theory but find it difficult to convert it into a program. Now one of the programs that most of you find difficult is bubble sort. So what I'm going to do in this video is code bubble sort right from scratch. And along the way, I'm going to use a lot of animations to help us understand bubble sort logic very well. All right. Now, but before we go into the bubble sort logic, let's see how any sorting algorithm works. Now, in any sorting algorithm, typically you have a set of numbers that are input from the user that need to be sorted. Now, these input numbers are in a random order and the user wants to sort these numbers. What do you do? You give these numbers to a sorting algorithm. In this case, the sorting algorithm is bubble sort, but that need not be the case. There are many other sorting algorithms like uh, merge sort, quick sort, exchange sort. Those of you who are comps and IT students, you will have many more sorting algorithms in the third and fourth semester. But in this case, it's a bubble sort. Now, irrespective of the sorting algorithms, the output of the sorting algorithm is a sorted array. All right. Now, a sorting algorithm can either sort it in ascending order or in descending order. So the output is a sorted array. In this case, it's in ascending order. Now what you need to figure out is how to implement the sorting algorithm. Because hopefully most of us know how to accept set of numbers from the user as input, store it in an array and print a sorted array. What we find difficult or confusing is the implementation of the sorting algorithm. All right. All right. Now, having said that, let's actually directly jump into coding and let's code up the part that we understand. All right. So I'm going to start with class bubble sort in which I'm going to write everything. So let me save this as bubble sort dot Java. All right. Um, so this is my program bubble sort dot Java, the class name being bubble sort. And the main method is a part of this class. Now, some of you might find this a different kind of text editor. I have black background and colorful words coming up. You have, you might have a different text editor that is perfectly fine. The Java code is going to remain the same. All right. And let me quickly show you how I'm going to run the programs. Um, terminal. This is where I'm going to run the programs. So this blinking cursor is where I will type Java bubble sort dot Java and it has compiled. All right. So now let's start coding the steps that we know that is taking input from the user, storing the numbers in an array and printing the array. So at least we've got that part settled and then we look at bubble sort. All right. So I'm going to take input from the user. I'm going to call the bubble sort method on the input and I'm going to print the sorted numbers. All right. So this is in general my logic and let me write input from the user part of it. Now to take input from the user, uh, I'm going to use the scanner class. All right. So scanner s is equal to new scanner system dot in. All right. So this is a line that will help me take input from the user. And whenever you use the scanner class, you need to import the right package. So java.util.scanner is what I'm importing. All right. So I've done that. Now, the first thing to ask the user is how many numbers you want to sort or n, the number of elements in the array. All right. So I'm going to write um, how many numbers do you want to sort? All right. And I'm going to accept input in a variable called n. So I'm going to write int n is equal to s dot next int. So what will be stored in n? Uh, the number of numbers that are going to be sorted. So if the user wants to sort seven numbers, n is going to be seven. If the user wants to sort 10 numbers, n is going to be 10. So we know the number of numbers that want to be sorted. So we need to, after this, create an array of that many numbers. So I'm going to create an array called in input array all right and it's an integer array i'm assuming the numbers are going to be integers all right so i create an integer array called input array of the size n all right so i'm going to write new int n so what i've done is i've just created the array in which i'm going to store the input numbers now i've not yet accepted the numbers as input i've only accepted the size of the array so let's ask the user to enter the n 
numbers. All right. So what this will do is it will ask the users to enter the five or seven numbers, how many ever there are. Now to accept n numbers, I'm going to use a loop, a for loop to accept the numbers. So int i is equal to zero. I goes from zero to n and i plus plus. All right. And I'm going to accept them as uh, input. So I'm going to do input array of i is equal to s dot next int. So what have what I've so far done is accepted n and then accepted n numbers from the user. All right. So let's see if it compiles so far. Um, I like to periodically compile programs to ensure that I've not yet made any errors. And second thing that I always declare variables just before they are used. That's my programming practice. You could in the beginning itself write int n comma input array comma i comma all the variables before you use them. But I tend to use them. I tend to uh, declare them just when I use them. All right. So let's quickly um, go ahead and compile this. I'm going to write Java bubble sort dot java um, and there are no errors so so far it's all good now let's see if we've actually accepted input correctly how do we know that all right let's actually go ahead and run this so i'm going to do java bubble sort all right so how many numbers do you want to sort let's say i want to sort three numbers so enter the three numbers so three two and five these are the three numbers now i don't know what it's doing inside because i've not printed anything all right so let me move on and write a method called print array that prints the array that is that is passed to it all right so i'm going to pass input array to a method called print array of course i've not yet implemented this method so let's go ahead and do that now remember this method is called from the main which is static so a static method can only call another static method so print array is going to be another static method now print array is not going to return anything it's only going to print the array so static void print array um sorry print array and as input i'm going to accept an integer array let's say it wants to print an array of numbers all right so i'm calling my array numbers and i've written the method signature static white print array accept uh, print the array called numbers now how do i print the array very simple i create a variable called length which is the length of the array so numbers dot length is stored in the variable called length and then again i create a for loop where i write int i is equal to zero yada 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 i'm sure most of you kind of know this i plus plus and i just do a print of I like, I like to have spaces, so numbers of i. So what I have done is I am only printing the array. All right. Um, so let's, before we call this method, uh, write a print statement that says printing the array of numbers or printing the numbers you entered. All right. So let's quickly look at the program. What I have done is I have written the input from the user part. In this part, first I've written the scanner line, which um, is used to accept the input from the user or input from the terminal. Then I ask the user for how many elements are there, that is n. Then I create an array of n elements. And then finally I ask the user to enter the n elements. Using a for loop, I accept those n elements into an array called input array. And then finally I print the array using a print array method that accepts an array and prints it. All right, so now let's run it and see whether it's all good. Um, yep, it seems to be. So let me run it. How many numbers do you want to sort? Four numbers. Let me enter the four numbers. Three, two, five, and one. Printing the numbers you entered. As you can see, three, two, five, one are the numbers. So we've ensured that we've got that part done, taking input from the user, storing it in an array, and printing the array. Now what we need to do, the important bit is do the bubble sort, all right? So here I'm going to write the bubble sort algorithm. But instead of writing it all the way here, I'm just going to call a method called bubble sort to whom I pass an array, which I want to sort using the bubble sort algorithm. So I'm going to pass the input array to the bubble sort method. And let me say that this method returns a sorted array. So bubble sort is a method to whom you pass an integer array which is unsorted and it returns another integer array which is sorted. 
all right so what i'm doing here is i'm going to write integer array which is sorted array is equal to bubble sort all right so now we come to the important bit that is implementing the bubble sort method but before we actually implement it let's see using animations how bubble sort actually works all right so let's say this is a set of numbers given as input by the user which we've stored in an array so 52 34 86 17 66 10 and 40 this is my array of numbers and i want to sort them let's assume in ascending order that means i want 10 to be the first element of the array and 86 to be the last element of the array all right now how does bubble sort do this bubble sort compares adjacent elements of the array if these adjacent elements are in a desirable order bubble sort leaves them as it is. If the adjacent elements are not in the desirable order, bubble sort swaps them. Now the desirable order when you're trying to make um, an ascending sort is that the first number should be smaller than the second number, right? So how does bubble sort work? It checks the first element which is 52 and 34. It is not in the desirable order because 52 is greater than 34. So what it will do is it will swap them. Then it moves on and checks 52 with 86. Is 52 less than 86? Yes, it's a desirable order. So leave it as it is. Move on and compare 86 with 17. So bubble sort continuously scans the array from the first element to the last and checks if the adjacent elements are in the desirable order. All right. So again, 86 is greater than 17. So a swap occurs. 86 is greater than 66. So again, it swaps. 86 is greater than 10. So again, there is a swap. 86 is greater than the adjacent one, which is 48. So again, there is a swap. And now I have scanned all the elements of the array, right from the first till the last. So this is called a pass. A pass means scanning the elements from the first till the last. All right. And at the end of the first pass in bubble sort, the position of the largest element is fixed. The largest element was 86 and we wanted it to be the last element, right? So that is what has happened at the end of the first pass. So in each pass in bubble sort, an element bubbles up. Especially in this, when you're doing ascending order, the element bubbles up. The largest element bubbles up to the last position. All right. What happens in the second pass? Now, what do you need to do? You need to again do the same thing for the remaining elements from the for the elements from 34 to 48 because 80, 86 place is fixed. That is going to be last. So in the second pass, what happens is that you do the bubble sort for the remaining. So again, it compares 34 with 52. They are in the desirable order. Leave them. Move on 52 with 17. They are not 52 is greater than 17. So make a swap 52 and 66. No swap 66 and 10. 66 is greater than 10. So swap it. 66 is greater than 48. So swap it. So at the end of the second pass, the second highest elements position is fixed. All right. Now you need to sort only the remaining that is from 34 to 48. Again, 34 uh, is greater than 17. So there's a swap. 34 is less than 52. No swap. 52 greater than 10. So swap it. 52 greater than 48. So swap it. At the end of the third pass, the third largest position is fixed. That is 52 takes its correct place. All right. In the fourth pass, again, 17 and 34, leave them as it is. 34 greater than 10. So swap. 34 and 48, leave it as it is. 48 position is finalized. So this is how it moves on. In the fifth pass, 17 is greater than 10 and 17 and 34, 17 is less than 34. So 34 position is fixed. And finally, in the sixth pass, you can see that the array is already sorted. So how does the sorting work is that in each pass, an element bubbles up to its correct position. So how many passes would you need? You would need as many passes as there are elements because in the first pass, highest element moves on. In the second pass, the second highest element bubbles up. In the third pass, the third highest element bubbles up. So you need as many passes as many as there are elements in the array. So this is how bubble sort works. So now what we need to do is we need to code this up. So good luck with that. Um, let's move back to our coding screen. The last line that we had written was this, which was invoking a method called bubble sort to whom you pass the input array and which returned the sorted array. All right. So now what we need to do is implement the bubble sort method. Remember, we are calling it from the main. So it's static. The bubble sort method returns an integer array, which is a sorted array. So return type is the integer array. The name of the method is bubble sort and we pass it an array. All right. And let's call that array numbers. So numbers is the array you want to sort. Now, how did bubble sort work? It worked in passes. 
So in the bigger scheme of things, there was 